the most critical thing this gear could do to take their skiing to the next level. Hello skiers, I'm Tom Yelly from Big Picture Skiing. Welcome to Carve's Technique Teardown, where we take video footage from skiers just like yourself, analyze it frame by frame to help figure out what is the most critical thing this gear could do to take their skiing to the next level. So I hope that you get something interesting and informative out of this video session that is also gonna help improve your own skiing. So let's jump right into it. Now, first of all, with any analysis, the most important thing you wanna find out first is what the skier was thinking about, what their intentions were on this particular run. And Aiden sent through some really helpful information. So first of all, he's trying to make some carb turns. And uh, on this run, he was focused mostly on his stance and being forward through the start of the turn and then a little more centered and using the tail of the ski through the end. So let's jump in with some uh, side by side and have a look more at what I mean by this. We've got Aiden here in the yellow trousers on the left and myself in the blue on the right. So if we have a look at the transition, so coming out of or completing one turn into the start of the next turn, I think some guidance will help him succeed in his goal of more dynamic carving. What I see Aiden first, sort of perhaps his first mistake is as he starts his turn, we'll go back one more here, right here, take this one for example, I'm gonna draw in his skis where they're pointing. So end of the turn, they're pointing here. We scrub a little further and already within, God, not even half a second, he's almost turned his skis 90 degrees to the direction of where he was uh, finishing traveling. Now if we use one of uh, my turns to compare with that, so we go turn completion here, we scrub a little further, I draw in where my skis are pointed, they're here. It takes a lot longer before my skis are in the fall line, which is where Aiden's are now. So just have a look at how quickly Aiden goes from turning this way to across, okay? Now that blocks your inclination um, and it means you're actually trying to steer the skis more through a pivoting mo movement. And for advanced carving, it comes more from creating inclination and angles. And you can see when we're both in the fall line here, big difference in, in how much angle we're, we're able to create and so then therefore I can use the ski design to carry me across the hill like this. Whereas Aiden, you'll see, you watch here, it takes a long time for him to, him to get deflection and get redirected across. And you almost see this stance that looks a bit static and wooden as he mentions in the email. Now this is Aiden's better turn, this side, and you can see he's, he's making more of that stronger crossover movement, which has helped to tip his edges up Okay. And also you can notice he doesn't twist the skis as much. But we're getting closer here and you see the skis are kind of skidding and they're not turning through tipping over further. He's sort of he's set up this much edge angle. We come a little further on, see it's staying the same. It's not increasing. You've got to increase that edge angle gradually, progressively through the turn in order to make that, uh, that ski keep turning and almost catch you. The feeling that I would love Aiden to get would be that the pressure against his outside foot is not coming from him like pressing on it or moving his body out this way to get the pressure on it. The pressure comes from staying balanced. This is what I feel, sort of balanced. And if, if you take my hand here as an example, I'm trying to stay connected. That would be my foot and my edge. Here's my body. I'm trying to stay connected for as long as I can as I topple in with this point, as opposed to throwing myself in and see my elbow would lose its contact point. All right, Aiden and viewers at home, here's something you can try to simulate the crossover movement and the difference in terms of uh, letting yourself topple without letting your feet turn too soon as we saw Aiden. So, so I'll start with what you wanna be doing. So you're coming around, you're finishing this turn. It's as I'm finishing, I'm thinking and preparing to cross over and get myself into this position. 
maybe not this much edge angle, but over here, the thought needs to start earlier. So I'm coming around, coming around, and watch how my feet stay pointed at the camera as I start to get my hips and body, ankles, knees, everything rolling over. So see this foot is still pointing that way. When I do that, that allows, that gets my feet out of the way. So I do topple and I create a, a movement to the inside. And it doesn't need to be that much. Here, 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 over I go. I'm trying to go here, tip the scales a little bit so the weight of my body drives the edging. I don't have to force it. My feet haven't turned too soon, so now I don't need the banister to hold me up because I'm not toppling. I point my feet here. Now I need the banister because I'm moving inside. I hope that little indoor exercise helps. Helps you get an idea of what I'm trying to get you to do in your carve turns to increase the edge angle, which will allows you to make the ski turn. And as it continues to turn, turn, turn across your direction of travel that keeps you, uh, helps you stay balanced with that outside ski and gives you like that platform, which redirects you and feels awesome. Good luck. All right, and so what are the most important take home points here? Well, I think the first one is when you start your turns, this crossover movement doesn't involve any twisting or redirecting the skis too early. So be patient with allowing the skis to almost point for longer in the direction of the new turn. So at this moment, we'd like to see your skis pointed more in this direction, okay? Now, as that's happening, you're gonna be almost in a sense of, of like a free fall, but it's a free fall that is connected to your outside ski. So back here, you're definitely gonna feel like your body weight is, is dropping and moving across your skis into the new turn but it's not too far, like a big throw and we'll lose this connection to the outside ski. But a deliberate movement to, to the inside of the new turn will start to give you a higher edge angle at this point. That is going to lead to the ski starting to bend. The bending, remember, now brings the tip almost like I'm gonna draw here across your line of travel. So your body going this way the bending ski is what catches your body, gives you that pressure on the outside ski, as opposed to you trying to press at the ski, like here, bracing on the leg, causing a stiffer look in your body to try and get the ski to turn and carve around. Okay, and that comes from back here early, having a good crossover movement. So work on the exercise I gave you indoors to think about it, maybe watch this video a few times, and, and I would say definitely start on, on easier terrain and uh, yeah, and be patient with this movement and wait for that pressure to come on because when it does, you're gonna be ripping across the hill with so much more control, you're gonna feel like you wanna take on steeper slopes so you can get a bit more speed and be able to lean in even further while staying connected with that outside ski. And uh, it's gonna open up a whole new world of uh, carving and you might get that Instagram cover shot you've been looking for with some really nice angles happening. I really hope you guys enjoyed this uh, lesson, this technique teardown. Uh, if you'd like some more, we actually are inviting people to send in your own video if you'd like it analyzed. And if you do so, there'll be information down below. So thanks for tuning in to Carve's Technique Teardown. I'm Tom Gelly. I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.